Hi everybody, it's Sylvain again. Um, I want to talk to you about something really, really important. And this is for you guys who uh, maybe you've been painting several years. Uh, maybe you're self-taught, maybe you're going to school. I don't know if this is a failure of the, the arts programs in schools or what, but I see it constantly and it's driving me crazy. Um, this is the number one, number one problem by far for painters. And I don't think enough time is spent researching this. You can go on Google, you can educate yourself about this, but nobody talks about it. My three pillars, my three uh, aspects of judging artwork, making artwork, remember, if you'll remember back, go back to those videos. Um, the three things are medium, subject, and content. Right off the bat, the first one, medium, is the most important. And I don't care if you paint in oils, acrylics, watercolor, wax, whatever you use. Uh, the people I see messing this up for years on end, they just don't seem to get it, are oil painters. I think the other medium, the response is so immediate and visceral with the work that you, you self-educate even though you don't know maybe technically what's happening. But for some reason I see uh, non-professional and even people who even in galleries so don't feel bad. Uh, I see this everywhere and uh, I need to talk to you about the application of paint. This is going to affect how you mix your paint, blend your paint. What I'm there's a difference between blending and mixing. Let's just say that right off the bat. When you mix your paint, you're mixing it before you apply it to the canvas or the board or whatever you're painting on. And I'm not going to get too technical right now. Anyway, um, you need. This is going to affect the brushes you use big time and especially how you physically apply the paint and that's just not that's not only physical because as you're physically applying you have to know in your head what is happening with that medium again oil acrylic water whatever here's the thing I want to give you a mental tool to understand what it is that's happening when you do that I mean, when we're kids, we play with crayons and colored pencils and stuff, and we just happily go all over the place. And what we don't understand is that the wax that the crayon is made of is holding um, uh, little color granules in, in suspension, and they kind of overlay each other. And, and your teacher's fond of having you uh, mix a green and a yellow to make a blue, and you go, wow, you know, that's great. Um, and you mix right on the paper or cardboard that you're using and I think that that's a, a big big disservice um, to to you as a human being when you move into painting you think that you can do the same thing and it, and this is the story you know you go to the art you go to the, the, the Utrecht or you go to a local art store you buy your paints you start mixing up you go to look at maybe you saw a, a, um, a, Van Gogh in uh, in a museum somewhere, and you saw just oodles of paint all on there, and you think, well, you know, there are no rules, just go. Listen to me, this is so important. What you need to understand is the concept between additive and reductive color. The only thing that's additive color is electronic. It's the sun, it's your TV, your monitor, because those are little photons of light and electrons, and they're being bombarded against something, and they are the light spectrum. They are actual particles of that light spectrum that are hitting your eye. So f additive color mixture, unless you're a photographer, don't even think about it. That's not you. I'm talking to painters. What we are, I'm a painter, are reductive color mixtures. That's incredibly important to understand. So, 
I'll give you a quick example and then I'll go deeper into it. If you have a titanium white on a board and a alizarin crimson on a board um, and you drag those colors into each other, you are not, and again, this, this is rhetoric and you have to get it in your head, you are not mixing white into red. That's what you think you're doing, but that's not what you're doing. What you're actually doing is for every little bit of red you're putting into the white, you're getting rid of white. It's subtractive. When you're adding white into the red, you're getting rid of red. You're not adding white, you're getting rid of red. You have to think this way because this, this is how it works. Your eye sees spectrums of light that are entering into it and your brain deals with that. When you put titanium white on a canvas, what you're putting is a mixture of paint that in its most tiny, tiny, tiny granular form is in suspension in that oil, the, the pigment, if you will, is a pigment that reflects back to your eye the full spectrum of light. That's why it looks white. When you put red down, what that, think of it this way, that, that pigment is all of the other colors of the spectrum except red. I'm going to say that again because this is, this is so important. When you put what looks like red paint onto a surface and you look at it, the red you are seeing is the narrow spectrum of light called red that's escaping the paint. The paint is actually all the other colors. Think of it that way. So this is why all amateur painters, and it shows up so glaringly when you know this, you walk into a gallery and you go, Ugh. you know right away. Because you merely, not you personally, but the, the, art, the unknowing artist will go in and say, well, I, I'll give you another example. Surratt, the pointillist, will point, a, a, he, he, if you look up close to his painting, he'll put little dots of color, right? He'll put red and blue and yellow and green and, and uh, amongst the white of the canvas. And then if you back up, your eye will get those exact colors going through the lens and your brain will mix them. Your brain will mix them. If you take that red, blue, yellow, and green, and you physically mix that paint, you're going to get what's known as mud. Because now, all of those reductive, those everything but that color mixed together, are trapping all the light. If you take something that's only reflecting red and something that's only reflecting green and it has everything else in it and you mix them, remember you're taking away red and you're taking away green, what are you going to end up with? It's reductive. You're subtracting color. So you end up with muck, this greenish olive gray mud. And, and some artists get so used to making that mud that they work in mud. And they add titanium white to make lighter mud. And sometimes they're surprised and it kind of looks greenish because there just happens to be more of that mineral in there. Or, or they'll add a little black to, gray, to make it even darker. And they're mud painters. That's not what you want to be. That's not what you see when you see great art. That's, that's disgusting. That's somebody who completely does not understand what they're doing. So I'm trying to help you. If that's you, I'm not trying to beat you over the head. I'm trying to, there's a big hole in education here and you need to understand what you're doing with your paint. You're taking away color. Now, remember I said there's a big difference between mixing and, uh, anyway. When, when you take lessons and go on the internet, you know, there's a guy called, uh, uh, gosh, I'll post it, I'll put it in the comments. 
uh, who has great simple classes on oil paintings you need a soft brush you need you need to be able to you know what wet on wet painting is most people think that it goes well while the painting while the paint is still fresh I can go right into it that's the problem you need to layer paint on top of paint you can scratch your paint into fresh paint and and make a little bit mixture very carefully for the first swipe but as soon as you go into it a little more you're mixing it and you're subtracting you're taking away color you're making mud so when you're wanting to apply another color especially in oils or any kind of translucent or uh, non opaque even with acrylics you can make your acrylics non opaque um, you want to go over either dry paint or if you're wet on wet a thinner paint more linseed oil if you're an oil painter not turpentine linseed oil you want to make the paint thinner like an ink and you want to use a really soft brush so that you just lay it on top and that way the color that's underneath will still grab light and bounce back and you'll see it do you understand there's a lot on the web about this I may talk about it some more I don't want to be blah, 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 forever about it but please 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 this is a huge problem and it will separate you so like a like a big wall between amateur and somebody who really knows what they're doing and is making beautiful work so I hope that makes sense if it doesn't please write comments I'll try to be more clear um, like I said there's a lot of examples of this but unless you know to look for it on the web the people that give you examples don't even talk about the reductive aspect of paint if you understand that then you'll understand what's happening when you're mixing your paint all right happy painting thanks for tuning in have a great new year um, talk to you soon